it's yours. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the inviting uh, for this really interesting conference. Uh, I'm learning much for the Boreal Forest. I'm not a forester from the Boreal Forest. I'm near the borderline to the Nemoral zone in the southern uh, part of Sweden, and we are living in the north part of Germany and um, has uh, a special concept. And I will give a short introduction about this uh, concept. And um, <clears throat> um, firstly, I would like to say that we have no virgin forest. So it was really interest to see uh, which kind of problems uh, you we have to uh, manage this forest and we are completely in the different situation we have some parts and very small areas with protected areas on long term um, without management and uh, it is really a low number of the forest of the, the in, in the current situation here in germany what would like to talk to you i would like to give a short uh, overview about the forest and nature conservation and hunting goals uh, of the concept from uh, from the concept of the Lübeck management and uh, also the inventory methods for the concept and the development of the forest and conclusions derived from uh, it to the city forest. And, and uh, on the end, I would like to give a really short numbers of economic aspect of the close to nature forestry management. Okay, silviculture and forest uh, in the forest of Lübeck. We managed uh, 4,600 hectare forest land and uh, 9, 920 hectare of non forest land. That is very important. That is mostly uh, areas with uh, the key goal of uh, nature conservation and, for example, uh, the the salt marshes uh, near the Baltic Sea and so on. And it is also, um, we are also manage these areas. What is the goal from the, um, from the Sylvie culture in Lübeck? The goal is a nature forest with low input forest management. And um, this is a long-term uh, experiment. And so I would like to give you a short introduction about the first results of this experiment and for the answer what is the nature forest if we have no virgin forest we have selected 11 percent unmanaged representative typical forest this is the name is reference areas i think that is more or less the same what we hear in the last two days um, also uh, with reference areas or reference forest the, the concept is developed with some of the biggest nature conservation NGOs in Germany in 1992 to 1994 and would be approved by the government in 1995. And uh, that was very important that the government say, okay, this is the concept for long term and um, we have no chance more or less to change the concept in general. And uh, what is the key goal? is not a stable forest structure like a fixed status. It is a dynamic ecosystem with very variable processes and structures. Uh, with other words, we say uh, the forest in Lübeck is a randomly multivariant succession mosaic. And I think the very important point is the randomly and so uh, from the um, uh, from the view of uh, scientific it is um, not too easy to handle this one uh, for the planning process and that is also what we have as a problem in the um, in the past time so here you can see two pictures and um, <clears throat> the uh, the first picture is a uh, normally 120 years old forest uh, beach forest in Lübeck and uh, the second picture is a forest uh, it's 100 years untouched and so you can see some difference by the pictures and um, in the in the first picture you can see some green parts on the uh, on the floor on this forest and you can see here also a little bit uh, and uh, you, you can also see that the forest has um, different um, density of the forest, but in general, it is more or less the same light situation in this forest. And the green parts here, that is the starting of 
natural regeneration with also with beech and some other um, broadleaf tree species. And this is an area the same age and um, 100 years untouched. And, and here you can see the difference of the light is much more. Here you can see a really big gap or a bigger gap. And, and then you can also see that here is more or less the same situation like in the managed forest and here that is much more dense. So the difference from the um, untouched forest by the light situation in the forest is much more higher. And this uh, um, a very important point is also that you here you can see 100 years untouched, but you cannot see dead wood. And that is also a surprise from us. In this forest, um, the, the beech are not dying and also the other mixture trees are more or less not really dying and uh, they are only growing and they have a really high growing rate. But a little bit later, I will talk to this one. So what is the, um, the main goals from this one? The, we have, uh, firstly, we have a target stock. That means the standing volume per cubic meters and hectare. And that is 80% uh, of the reference areas. For example, from the normally beach forest ecosystem, um, that is uh, currently 600 cubic meters per hectare. And we have in the untouched forest, we have more or less 700 to 800 cubic meters uh, as a current situation. And so we calculated that we need in the managed forest 600 cubic meters per hectare as a goal for this managed forest. And the next one is also very important that we say, okay, this is a, uh, this is a target stock, the, the other age, and, but we would like to do no activities in the silviculture system under a minimum standing volume. And the minimum standing volume is 250 cubic meters per hectare. So we have no chance or we, we have the regulation that we are uh, going not under the 250 um, cubic meters, not square meters, cubic meters per hectare. And this is also this, um, yeah, this value is also developed from the reference areas. We cannot find on the bigger areas in the reference areas um, <clears throat> A situation in the beach forest they has a lower number of 250 cubic meters per hectare. Um, then we have a regulation for the dead wood and to say, okay, if we um, starting with the concept, we say, okay, 10% of the dead wood uh, from 10% uh, dead wood as a um, target for uh, from the living uh, standing volume we need for, for dead wood. But this is uh, not really good that we have some areas, they have no dead wood or a really low number. And we have other areas, they have much more higher number. And so we say, okay, the same what by the standing volume, we say 80% of the, um, uh, of the dead wood, what we find in the reference areas, we would like also develop in the managed forest and we looking by this one to the forest community like a natural vegetation type to the tree species composition and the they come um, and also for the um, uh, for the how how big is a dead wood and which kind of development phase from the um, from the rotting uh, process has this uh, dead wood and for this one we have a uh, inventory and we uh, we check by the inventory what is the development in the managed forest and what is the development in the untouched forest like reference areas and the same regulation we have also by the biotope trees uh, the biotope trees is a tree with a hole for uh, from the wood pickers or so on and I think you, you know what I mean and um, <clears throat> then we have also a really um, limit for the wood uh, uh, or for the for the cutting activities, we say okay. We would like to um, um, say that mostly we stopped the cutting activities if the the trees are, has a lower diameter than to, uh, 15 centimeters, and uh, all the other ones um, are laying in the forest for the future as a dead wood or biotope trees and. Um, we have also a really strong regulation for the protection of the crown wood 
we would like to um, uh, protect all the cones, uh, uh, cone wood in the forest. And also by the soil protection, we have a large, a large distance between the skidding trails that is in the moment as a goal, we have 80 meters. And uh, we have also a really strong regulation about the skidding trails for protection of bog and uh, bogs and other um, key habitats. And uh, we have also many activities for renaturation of the water courses in the forest. Um, by this uh, really clear goals, some parts are very clear that is forbidden by the forest activities, clear cuttings, monocultures, introduction of exotic tree species, application of pesticides and fertilizers, skidding activities outside of the skidding systems, it is very important, drainage of the soils, no forest activities outside of the natural disturbance regime of the forest ecosystems, and feeding of wild animals that is a hunting regulation. And uh, this one is very important that we have no, um, no activities they are outside from this one. That is really strict forbidden and we have no other way to handle the forest. So for this one, we need a really good inventory and we are measure forest indicators every five or 10 years with a sample plot or area-based inventories. And um, this um, indicators are the standing volume different in the different forest ecosystems, including the habitat trees and dead wood. The basis is the reference areas in relationship to the uh, managed forest. I say it as a goal at 80%. Development of the close to nature of different forest ecosystems. We're looking to the tree species composition, including different succession stages. We're looking to the gap dynamic the structure of the vegetation and tree layers. And we have uh, also developed the indicator species inventories for mammals, birds, herbs, ferns, lesions, and fungi. So the, the inventories um, are the great importance of the concept. They are essential tools for a combine the, net, the natural forest inventories and forest management plans um, have three um, main points the for forest inventory with the main goals of the inventories have also uh, um, have also um, to on on plots and the sample plot inventories we have more than 2000 plots and we are measure this 2000 plots every 10 years and, and in the moment we're starting a little bit shorter rotation of this uh, sample plot inventories, we would like to go to seven years. That is a regulation from the EU for the um, nature protected areas. And the stand inventory with main goals on the management plans, we have also in a more yeah, lower number. And we have site mappings and we have a biotope mapping, uh, the biotope mapping on the sample plots and also on the stand level. So I would like to show you some examples. It is a sample plot inventory. Um, with four inventories and uh, you can see by the rings that uh, the development of the single trees we have measure all the trees in um, uh, on the sample plot and you can see the developed of the tree and uh, the different colors are the different tree species and so on i think that is uh, normally sample plot inventories and by this one we are also uh, measure the dead wood and the biotope trees in this sample plot inventory. The next one is the biotope mapping. Here you can see um, the different colors are shows how close to nature is the forest from the tree species composition. And that is green is uh, on the good level and um, uh, violet is uh, on the really bad level. And so you have a very short uh, yeah, time, you have a good overview about uh, the areas um, with uh, thinning or um, selective cutting activities for promotion of the natural vegetation type. And the different natural vegetation types you can see by a blue line. The blue lines are the border lines from the different natural vegetation types. It is based on the site mapping and on uh, vegetation uh, mapping, what we are doing. And then you can see some small symbols like uh, um, a bird or a tree or a small herb, and these are red list 
species um, on this area, on this special area here in my forest from Lübeck. And this is the other inventory also from the biotope mapping. Here you can see um, the different colors shows uh, how good is the structure. This means um, how many layers are inside of the forest. And also the same, it is green, it is more than four layers. And if the brown uh, color, it, it is uh, only two or one layer in the forest. And the different symbols are shows also uh, different um, um, dead trees or biotope trees or some special um, uh, habitats like a, a, a small lake or, uh, or so on. And then you have a number for this one and then you have a database and can show what, which kind of habitat this is. So the results from the inventories. Here you can see the develop of the standing volume per cubic meters in one of the reference areas, the starting reference areas uh, after uh, 1992. And we're starting with a normally value from this one that is for like um, 340 cubic meters per hectare. And that is a mixture, a protive tree mixture stand. And then you can see the different development of the uh, standing volume in the reference areas and in the moment we have more than 650 cubic meters or like more than 600 cubic meters standing volume and uh, the different colors shows the development of the tree species and here you can see that um, the beach is really coming and um, the oak uh, like the blue color um, is more or less stable, but is in the last inventory is also a little bit growing up. And then you have a gray color that are the different hardwood like Ulmus, Arza or Prunus. And here you can see they have also a good development and this um, more or less coming in the, uh, in the forest of the reference areas. And then there's a yellow and this is the ash. And here you can see the influence from the ash disease um, uh, from 2013 to 2021, the number of the ash is a little bit going down. And very interest, and, and this was really a surprise for us, is that it's an untouched forest. It is a brown, uh, dark brown color. That is a spruce. And we have also in the reference areas not only selected this one by natural vegetation type or near to this natural vegetation type, we have also selected as a reference areas, some plantation areas. And the spruce has really a high growing rate and a, um, a good development in the, reference area, in the reference areas. And that was a surprise for us. I will talk to this one a little bit later. And here you can see the development of the size classes um, of the of the timber in, in Lübeck from uh, one of the beach forest ecosystem. And here you can see the uh, blue colors are always uh, the development from, from Lübeck. And here you can see the diameter class 7 to 14. And the last one is 125 to 135 or bigger. And, um, and the, the brown color is the average from the inventory from Germany as the average also from the same beach forest ecosystem. And here you can see that we have in Germany in the average, we have a peak on smaller size trees like 35 to 45 centimeters. And after 64, um, this is really going down. So we have no big trees. And if you uh, see to the Lübeck situation, we starting uh, with the hell blau, um, this is from 1992, and uh, the next one is uh, 2013, and then we have a 2021. And so you can see that we have on a strong development to more bigger trees in, the, in, in this forest. And it is not a reference area, so it is a managed forest. And you can see that you can produce big trees also in a managed forest. And um, that is a point on which, on which point you, you harvest the trees. And uh, we have uh, a clear regulation that we say, okay, we are not cutting the beach before 75 centimeters. And this is what you can see here also the development. We have more bigger trees than in the average uh, from the German situation. 
and that is not the end. Uh, so I think we have, um, yeah, we, this is the open process and we looking to this process and uh, waiting for the development. I say, uh, if I start, we have a low input forestry. And so I would like to give what is the low input forestry by the beach management. That is uh, the main tree from, from, the, from the forest uh, in, 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 um, in Lübeck. And here you can see the, uh, the density of the, um, of the, uh, of the different um, stands. And they're starting by 20 square meters. And uh, here is a 50 square meters is a really dense forest. And this one is a really open forest. And here you can see in this X, you can see the growing rate from a single beach. They are standing in this different situation. And so you can see by the lowest um, diameter, like 20 centimeter, you have a strong, strong influence from the density. If you have an open situation, the single tree is growing six millimeters per year. And if you have a dense situation, the, uh, the beach is growing like uh, 3.5. And if the beach is um, growing up in the diameter, so you can see this relationship from the um, uh, from the density of the stand is going down. And so if the tree is bigger, um, uh, you, you can see they have more or less no influence. And what is this for the result of the, um, of the silviculture system? We say, okay, if we have not really influenced to a growing rate to the beach, we stop the thinning activities after 35 centimeters. And we're waiting for the best harvesting diameter. And then the additional point is what do you see by the first picture um, uh, um, in the reference areas, we have a motility rate by this diameters from 40 and bigger, this is nearly zero. And so we have um, from, from um, um, the result of this one is that we have, uh, uh, um, that the, the result of this one is that we have a, a higher growing rate in, um, in the managed forest um, if we stop the activities in the diameter class from 35 centimeters to 75 centimeters from the best harvesting diameter. And the other point is what um, we also learned is that we analyze the influence from the, uh, how big is the crown from the single tree. And here you can see also the same, like on this axis is a, diameter growing from the single tree. And uh, here, here, here you can see how big is the cone from the beach. And that is a managed forest, a normally managed forest. And here you can see a really strong influence from the um, cone size to the, to the diameter growing. And uh, this is a little bit more uh, also and, and on the more or less on the same level, if you can see it by uh, untouched more than 10 years. And then you have a forest that's untouched more than 50 years, and the, the, the correlation is much more lower. So the, uh, what we are thinking mostly that the crown size is the, uh, um, is the most important point by the beach for the growing rate, uh, is we cannot really see in the untouched forest. And we have analyzed the, the newest uh, data from us uh, they are more or less 100, touched, uh, 100 years untouched for us, and we have no correlation between the cone size and the diameter growth. And the other point also that was also a surprise for us from the, from the forest management, and they have a strong influence to the, um, to the uh, tree architecture. And here you can see uh, the yellow tree is a, a tree there are going um, in a strong managed forest. Every five years, we have a thinning activities and promote the cone size. And the red one is the same age and um, the more or less the neighbor from this other one in the, in, in the neighbor stand. And this also 120 years old beach, but untouched 100 years. And so you can see that the DBH uh, is by the yellow one a little bit bigger here the numbers you can see in the in the back of this uh, pictures. There are uh, uh, 56 centimeters as a DBH, the yellow one, and um, 
the the red one is 53 centimeters. So the difference is three centimeters by 100 years um, promotion. And the other surprise was also the length of the stem. What we need for the best price of this one is in the untouched area. Uh, uh, the untouched area, the tree is much more longer. And the, uh, also the, the volume from this one um, is uh, 3.6 cubic meters and in the yellow one, 2.4 um, cubic meters. So uh, the, the nature produced much more timber for a better price level than what we have um, in the thinning, by the thinning activities produced. And here, this is also a very important point. So this is in German, but the, I can describe this. This is a standing volume, and that is a growing rate, and, and not from the single tree, from the stand. And here you can see we have a strong influence from the um, standing volume to the growing rate. And this is, was also a really surprise for us that this one is also if you have more than 800 or 1,000 cubic meters, it is also the growing rate is higher than uh, we are thin or we are reduced the standing volume. So that is the forest from us. <laughs> um, uh, here you can see a typical beach forest uh, with an uneven aged uh, structure. Here you can see small trees. Here you can see a big deadwood tree. Here you can see a living big trees with nearly best harvesting diameters. Here you can see other parts. That is a small mosaic. That is what we are say that the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the succession mosaic into the forest. Coming to the uh, um, parts of the uh, carbon fixing here, you can see the development from the carbon fixing, what we have done from 1992 to 2013 in tons per, um, uh, per hectare. And here you can see also that we have a good development of this one. And uh, we would like to start in the next year or in this year uh, for the promotion of this, um, uh, also for, for the uh, yeah, ecosystem-based um, services uh, to, to pay for this one and also for the carbon fixing. And so we find uh, um, yeah, a consultant said they would like to help us. Here you can see the, um, the influence of the managed and unmanaged forest to the, um, to the sensitivity to the, to, uh, to the dryness of the, uh, of the beach. And here, this is a really nice picture. Um, uh, you, you can see that the unmanaged um, forest is much more better on this situation than the, the managed forest. And the key of this is, is if you open the cone um, by the beach forest, so you have a higher risk uh, that they have problems with the dryness by the climate change. And if you have more closed situation, then you have no risk, more or less no risk by this one. We have also, I say, we have also some um, uh, uh, spruce forests and uh, also normally plantations here. One typical example was uh, bark beetles. Uh, uh, they are going inside of this one. This is a picture from 2003, the first really dry uh, year um, in the reference areas with bark beetles. And that is also a typical point. Some trees are dying and many of the trees are surviving. And you can find always 10 to 15 um, uh, trees uh, from, uh, they are dying from the bark beetles and the other can survive. And we have measure how big are the gaps inside of the spruce forest and also to the natural forest. But here you can see the result. That is the, um, the, the upper edge of the gap. Uh, uh, size and in, in, in square meters. And here you can see the different tree species like beech, oak. These are other broadleaf tree species. These are really wet soil conditions. And these are the conifers. And it was a surprise for us. In the reference areas, the, the, the gap size from the conifer trees from the plantation has more or less the same size like beech or oak forest. And it is more important how wet is the soil? Um, and then if you have more 
uh, wet soils, the the uh, the gap um, the gaps are has a bigger size than on the normally soils like a brown soil uh, what we have normally here in Germany. And we have learned from 2003 that we have say okay 2018 and 2019 we have a really big damage of um, uh, bark beetles in in Germany and we say okay we do nothing we waiting and here you can see the results um, that is a picture from uh, uh, from from the last summertime and you can see uh, from from 2021 three years later many of the spruces as a neighbor of this small um, uh, um, area with the bark beetle problems has survived also here in the front of this one some living spruces and zitka spruces are living and also some spruces in the back are also living and you have only a small gap and in this small gap the natural regeneration is coming very short in very short time and we find in all these areas um, that we have a natural regeneration from minimum 13 tree species and uh, um, then we have analyzed this result and in the reference areas we have damaged yeah, 376 uh, cubic meters by a standing volume in this reference areas from 26,000 um, 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 cubic meters. That is 1.6% are dying by the bark beetles. In the forest from Lübeck, that is the forest H H uh, HL, um, uh, we have damaged 3,200 cubic meters by a standing volume from a little bit more than 100,000. That is 3.5%. And the neighbor and from, from us, uh, they have more or less the same tree species composition like us. They have damaged uh, 3,000 to 20,000 cubic meters by a standing volume by, from 470,000. He has a little bit bigger area and he has a much more damaged um, uh, uh, by, the, by the bark beetles. So if you would like to fight to the bark beetles, you produce the problem uh, if you say if you are doing nothing so you can wait that is a special situation here in the north pass of german and we find also in other forests more or less the same result so this is a forest from uh, from from lübeck on on a little bit other side conditions with hornby and oak and we developed the various indicator species until now from mammals and birds and monitored this by every five years. And um, I will give only a short overview about the birds. And uh, so we have new birds like a sea eagle, a black sock, and osprey. And we have an increased population of some typical old growth forest birds like a middle spotted woodpecker and um, the red breast flycatcher and the green sand peeper. And um, this is very interesting that the middle spotted woodpecker starting with a population like more or less 30 peers in the whole forest areas and we are in the moment by 250 so they have a really uh, increased number and that is a point that is really strong correlated with the deadwood and with the biotope trees in the forest and so you can see this is a really good influence um, and, and a good indicator for uh, deadwood and biotope trees and the red breast flycatcher has um, we are only the last one um, of the forest uh, uh, forest areas in the north part of Germany with a stable population of this one and we have an increased or stable population of the indicator species what we have selected by the disturbance areas and we have a red becket shrike that is a um, he is more or less stable. The woodlark is, yeah, is a little bit going down, and the wine neck that is a very, a very interesting bird. Uh, we are starting with a population from like five to ten peers uh, in the 19th, and then the sea is going down, and uh, we are lost in five years ago. And in this year, we have uh, he is coming back and with five uh, peers uh, in the forest. So here you can see an example from this nice uh, flycatcher. 
And uh, what we also doing, what we um, we recreated the um, the water level into the forest. And here you can see an example. We have stopped all the activities for the drainage system, and so we have uh, a development on the right direction. And the other point that is, I think, from my view, we have uh, not really discussed it by the whole conference. That is uh, our, this is a really big problem in German. That is the uh, influence from the deers and the hunting system. And uh, so we, uh, we would like to start with a new hunting system. And uh, why we must start with a hunting system here, you can see a picture from one of the reference areas and we have building a fan. And inside of the fan, you can see is a natural regeneration is really coming. It is more or less the same light situation here. And uh, inside of the fan and outside from the fan, but outside from the fan, you cannot really find uh, natural regeneration. And the other point is also interest, um, some herbs, they are only growing inside of the fan, not outside. Outside, they are uh, uh, the grazing influence from the deers is too, too much. But the very important point, what we are learned, is the other point. Here you can see that is a beach, and uh, if um, there is falling down in the end of the 90s, and the crown is laying here, and inside of the crown, you can see the, the rest of the crown, also the natural regeneration is coming with the same species they are inside of the fan. So you would like, if you protect the cones into the forest, then you have also the natural regeneration. And that this fine structures and this microhabitats are very important also for the whole development of the forest ecosystems. And um, this is what we are learned more and more that we must protect this um, find structures inside of the forest for a better natural regeneration in the forest. The current hunting concept of the forest areas in Lübeck is we are managing only deers and red deers without carnivores and birds in relationship to the natural regeneration. That is the moment, that is the, the current situation. And this current necessary for implementation of the forest structure and tree species diversity um, diversity goals. And that is very important. We have in the moment a discussion that is uh, uh, in which kind of areas we need the hunting system or we need this hunting activities. And this is an open process and we will, we, we will be evaluated and the potential adoption every five years in the new goals. And the, the important point of this new goals or for this discussion is the inventory of the natural regeneration and the grazing influence on the natural regeneration. If we had a close to nature tree species composition and the forest structures and the stable rich natural regeneration, then we thinking of a changing hunting concept. That is very important that, that, uh, uh, that we can change this hunting concept to um, and, and um, yeah, adapt it to a new situation. And, we have more and more crowns. We protect all the crowns by the uh, by the harvesting activities, and so we. It's my hope that we can reduce the hunting activities inside of the forest. And here is also an example of the um, um, uh, of the other point of the hunting um, uh, activities. We have uh, analyzed the. Um, the influence from, or the browsing influence or the grazing influence uh, by the di different hunting regimes. And so you can see is a controlled uh, hunting system. That is what we are doing in the forest. And the other one is uh, what the private hunters are doing. And so the grazing influence by the private hunters is much more higher. And so we stopped all the um, rent systems uh, and uh, um, uh, with the hunters, uh, and uh, we are doing it uh, uh, more or less in the last 10 years by uh, own self. This is also a very important point that we have also discussed it. Um, what, is, what are the peoples are thinking about the forest in German? And so we have starting here from, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, from Forza, that is a company, they do this once. 
and we find that the most important point from the Germans are habitat and animals and plants that we would like to put, protect this one, this nine, 91 percent. And the protection of soil, water, and climate this is also 90, more or less 90 percent. And the recreation and um, for the people, this is uh, like a, um, 30 to 40 percent, and wood production is 20 percent. We have also a question to the economical situation from this one, but nobody has interest to this one. So we have uh, uh, outside from the forest owners. If you have a question to the normally people in Germany, they say, okay, um, forest is not for, um, for building money or for what, whatever. And we have also doing the same process in Lübeck and we have more or less the same results. So the, the last one from my um, presentation is what we have uh, um, as the income from, from the forest. And here you can see the, the price level and in euro per cubic meter. And then you, here, here, uh, here you can see the, um, how big is this um, tree. And three, uh, three means the tree has an um, average diameter from 30 to 39 centimeters, 40 to 40, 49, and so on. And here you can see if the tree is bigger, then you have a always increased price level. All the different tree species have a higher price if the tree is bigger. And only one tree species has a other behavior. That is the blue one, that is the spruce. Um, and all the other trees, also the pine, and the pine we have uh, in the last years, that is a calculation from 2013 to 2015. Uh, if you would like to do this in the last five years, uh, the level is uh, growing up, and, and especially by the pine and also by the larix, the price level is much more growing up, and also by the oak and also by the each. I all these trees only by spruce that is stable. And here you can see one um, that is also uh, we hear that the big trees is uh, more clever to to use. And this tree, what here is laying, the price from this tree was 20,000 euro, only one tree. And uh, this is a result from uh, really um, uh, close to nature forestry with a, with a view of the best harvesting diameter. The economical results and generally from the state forest enterprises of Lübeck, here you can see in the different um, uh, uh, yeah, years, year classes for, uh, by five years, starting with 1985 to 1989 and so on. And here you can see that we have uh, the revenues is uh, the first one and the cost are more or less the second one. And here you can see that the result for the Lübeck forest is, um, yeah, is negative. But that is with also with all the activities what we are doing. And so that is very important that you remember that I say we have 900 hectares areas with nature protection and so on. And this is more or less the result from this one. If you have only the view to the forest, here you can see this is the income from the forest. And this, uh, the next line is the, um, um, uh, the cost from the forest. And so we have the result of the forestry is more, more or less this one here and is more, this is not stable here. You can see if we starting with the concept in 1992, that is um, the, the income going down and 15 or 20 years later, that is uh, increased the income. And the income has no relationship to the cutting quota. Here you can see the cutting quota is very high and uh, we have uh, 300,000 euro income by nearly 20, 25,000 cubic meters. And here we have uh, nearly 10,000 cubic meters and we have an income from 400 or 450,000 euro. So, and, uh, and the also very important point is that the standing volume is going up from 300 to 435. The newest data from the last inventory shows that we have 480 cubic meters in the moment as an average. And here you can see what is the value of the forest at the starting in the 1985 from 60 million euro 
and in the moment we are staying by 145, uh, 424 million euro um, for the whole forest. So this is a we have the standing volume is increased on 50 percent, and the uh, the value of the forest is the doubled. Many thanks for for you. Uh, waiting for your question. Thanks a lot for a very interesting uh, and, and great lecture, Knut. Um, yeah, the first question is that uh, I noticed that there are a small proportion of Douglas fir in the Liebig forest. Uh, do you have a, a strict poly or a policy to remove uh, such exotic species? Yes, they're very strict. So we, but we are not made. We are not made clear cuttings. We are. Uh, we um, we promote by all the activities the native species, and if you have a competition situation from the uh, exotic tree species like Douglas fir or, or or other exotic tree species to the native tree to the native tree species, so we promote the native tree species. That is very strict, and we are planting. We have no planting activities for the exotic tree species, also for the other tree species. We are waiting for the natural regeneration. And also a comment, uh, if it was uh, more uh, predator animals like wolves and so on, the need for fencing and the need for hunting would be lower. But uh, uh, I mean, I guess you don't have any, <laughs> any. Uh, I mean, you don't have that, that kind of big predators in that area. So but, but, yeah, well, the wolf is coming. And uh, okay. uh, so we have uh, influence from the wolf outside from Lübeck, and also we have also many observations from the wolf inside of Lübeck and from the Lübeck forest. And we can see it always by the behavior of the deers and from the red deers also. You know, so they're building bigger groups, and um, so the wolves are has more problems to um, yeah. Uh, to hunt this uh, to this red deer, but we we have a good development on this one, and we can also the fence what we are um, building that is more or less um, yeah only for oak on some parts, and we reduce the number in very strong manner. Okay, interesting. Uh, so the best, uh, the best the best the best fan is the crown. Yeah. 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 Is it, have you, have you, I mean, in some systems, it's also like uh, uh, hawthorns and stuff like that, which is thorny or thorny bushes can also be that kind of protection uh, for new, new plants. Have you an experience of that? In the, yeah, in yes, we, we can also see it as more by the succession from the open land. Uh, that is not the typical gap dynamic uh, species. But by, uh, if you have a bigger areas or you have a natural succession by open lands, then the, the shrubs are very important for the natural regeneration from the tree species. But the shrubs are not so important by the typical gap dynamic in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the normally forest from Lübeck. So uh, when you talked about uh, uh, this uh, bark beetle infested parts, uh, uh, your suggestion is basically to just leave it and uh, to promote biodiversity, but also to uh, not create more damage than, than necessary by doing new vulnerable cuttings and cutting edges, I guess. Mm. It's a, uh, I mean, this is a big discussion because some parts of Sweden, even the uh, the county administration boards that maintains natural reserves uh, are pressed by different lobbyists to <laughs> go into reserves to to log even to to try to stop this uh, mm. uh, this uh, bark beetle uh, outbreaks. But but uh, your recommendation experience, as I understood, you was to leave them be uh, to create dead wood and but also to to let it stabilize by itself or did I misunderstand you? Yeah, I think that is a result from, from the Lübeck forest and the, and the neighbor forest. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think, uh, from my view, uh, you must test it, this one. Yeah, and um, so uh, in, in other regions. But my um, opinions and also some scientific work for this one, and we have searched to other scientific work in other regions uh, from, from 
Central Europe and we find some very interesting parts of this one. Firstly, the, if you um, stop the cutting activities from the from the deadwood from the spruce, so they have a um, they have a, a good influence to the climate on this on this damaged area. Uh, you have a little bit shady situation, and um, you have uh, some trees they are survive, and so you have a, a, a good mosaic on the on the floor. Uh, and, and this mosaic on the floor has um, if the different situations building a new, um, more diverse, a new generation of the tree species and, and uh, for the future. And the second point is if you have the deadwood and the deadwood falling down they um, starting to rot. And if they are rot, they are wet. And if they are wet and the sun is shining on this wet uh, uh, dead wood, so it is, it is uh, like a frozen on the on this area. Yeah, that, that is, a, um, is a really good cooling system for, the, for, for this area. That is the second one. And the third one is much more interest. What we are find that um, yeah, the, the insects, they are fighting to the, to the bark beetles. They are more in, in these areas with the uh, standing trees than with the uh, areas with, uh, you cut down this one. And um, the, the spruce give a signal to some other insects, um, like other beetles and also, I don't know what this is in English, but that is a um, uh, uh, special kind of insects family, they are coming and they are fighting to, um, uh, to the bark beetles. And they're coming a little bit later, uh, um, 14 uh, days or three weeks later after the first um, infect of the bark beetles. And in this moment, the forest manager manager coming and cutting down the trees. They're fighting to the antagonist and they are fighting not to the bark beetles. So it's a way to protect, among other things, the, the predator of bark beetles to, to, yes. to save yeah. these trees. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, as you know, there are many that are skeptical, uh, saying that, OK, this might work in, in North Germany, but, but how can you apply these ideas to, to Boreal or, or even to south parts of Sweden? Um, I, I mean, I guess. From my point of view, you are you're saying that you should work with the dynamics, which is natural to the place. So uh, that applies to any kind of area. In the, yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And then you should exclude what is unnatural for that kind of uh, system and also different kind of management methods, which it's not uh, healthy for the ecosystem and for, for people. Uh, but I would like you to comment on that too, because I mean, this is... Uh, uh, this is an uh, inspirational conference where we want to lift up different kind of uh, ecosystem-based forest management and different kind of uh, ecological knowledge to inspire people to, to, to think a bit, bit further than the, the general plantation and clear-cut model, of course. But could you comment on that? Uh, uh, just, oh, I think we have um, really... Um, a, a strong view to the reference areas and learning from nature. That is what we discussed the whole two days. Yeah, so that is more or less the same. What are you doing also, in, or more or less to the uh, to, uh, to this one? And the second one is, we would like to only to work with the uh, natural vegetation type, like uh, um, uh, the beech forest in, in, in Germany and uh, uh, in, in the forest from from the boreal zone. That is more or less. A mixture from spruce pine and birch and uh, aspen and so on yeah and uh, so that is very easy you can say okay uh, we are doing the same and uh, this uh, the third point is a little bit different and i think also i see it also by uh, by the presentation uh, by the uh, um, by the last two days that we would like to have a, um, uh, a cooking recept, yeah, like this one. Uh, so we have a, a, a stable um, succession mosaic in the heat, and we would like to promote this stable succession mosaic into the forest, like uh, from the and, and it is coming from the virgin forest. And I think that is a problem. We must more learn 
to accept the process, what the nature are doing and uh, going inside of this process. And we would like to, uh, to promote this process. Yeah? Uh, and promote has, uh, is not um, uh, to do more. Yeah? And uh, so it's more do nothing. Yeah? And waiting for the best harvesting diameters. Yeah? That is, I think that is the main goal of what we also have. We would like to produce uh, big timber with a high price level, yeah, and the, um, the thinning activities and also all the other activities. That is is not my goal, yeah. But uh, I will, would like not to do thinning activities to produce a special kind of structure inside of the forest. The structure is a result from a natural process, and that is what we are. That is a little bit different to the other things. But you can use it on the whole world. We have some projects. I was 18 years a consultant, and we, I have uh, do and starting some in some other kind of the uh, of the world in China, in Vietnam, in middle part of America, and in the south part of America, the same uh, the same things. So basically, what you're saying is instead of trying to imitate. Uh, reference landscapes, you should let the natural processes occur and or reintroduce them by not stopping them or not uh, modifying them or manipulating them. And, and then the forest in itself will be mul uh, multi-structured and diverse and restore itself by time. Uh, do I understand you correctly there or? Uh... Yes, yes. I think that the problem is that we have always a planning process in the heat yeah? or a controlling also on and that is what we stopped we we have um, more or less um we we made inventories for the observing and that is okay yeah and then we would like to say okay we have um, uh, um uh, a span from the development of the reference areas and also from the managed forest and the best way is if you're going with the with some people to the forest and they cannot see the difference from the managed forest and from the reference areas. And this is what we have more or less today. If you're going with some forest engineers also or with some um, uh, normally people to the forest from us, you can not really see the difference from the reference areas. They are more than 30 years and at some parts they are more than 100 years untouched. In the relationship to the managed forest, and that is what we uh, what we what we need, yeah. and that is a process from uh, what uh, we have protect the process and not the picture. Yeah, I understand. But we have a very special situation, as you heard during the conference in the Nordic forest. So we have an inverted landscape. So historically, the all growth gap dynamic or minimum disturbance dynamic forests were dominating and it was maybe up to 15 20 percent which were burned as so hard or it was a big uh, windbreak which created sort of a h uh, uh, stand replacing disturbance but but what was dominating historically was this old growth forest basically Today it's the opposite. Today it's our landscapes is dominated by young even age stands of the clear cutting and mm. by for the last 20 years millions of hectares of clear cuts. And it means that uh, we have a very unnatural situation to start with. Mm. And one of the things which is missing, except for continuity forests and old growth forest and deciduous trees and dead wood and everything that people talked about is uh, one of the most major disturbance regimes, which is forest fires, of course. Mm -hmm. And because we, we have uh, in many parts of the world, as you know, there is huge problems with increased fires uh, because of climate change. Uh, in, 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 so far in, in Fenoscandia, it's, it's the opposite that we have effic effectively uh, uh, took away this natural process to, especially to, to protect the, the, the wood value for the industry. And it means that, um, could it be so that in certain circumstances, of course, letting the natural dynamics and the disturbance all ongoing being the main process, but could it be for restoration purposes and for species associated with, with fire? I mean, they're not associated with clear cuts, they're associated with fire, you know, 
uh, burned wood, damaged wood, black soil, and so forth? Could it be so that that uh, a, a element of uh, uh, restoration, an element of simulation or imitation by controlled fires, for instance, uh, could be a part of, in your eyes, a part of a, a close to nature forestry, because this is a evolutionary and a very, very important process that so many species are connected to. How do you look on that question? Mm. Um, I think it, uh, the main problem is that we have a really uncertainly situation by the forest ecosystems. Uh, so we have a low, yeah, a, a low knowledge about this one. But we, 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 we must start with some management uh, decisions for the for the future. And um, the, the problem is that we have uh, that we, we need this decision. Yeah, and and we have uh, a special uh, situation in the forest from the past uh, activities inside of the forest. And this combined, you must find the best way to combine this all this one that you create a forest um, uh, they are more close to nature and from my view um, it is better uh, to stop activities that are doing too many activities and for with a special kind of uh, um, uh, thinking what is the best nature for in, in from from the human thinking and from my view is we need a really other view to the nature, to the process, and, um, and uh, not to a special kind of how many fires we have, how many uh, bark beetles and so on. So this is a process and we can, um, yeah, we can protect this, this process and that is what we are doing in, in the moment. And uh, we are not sure that it is the right way. That is, uh, yeah, it's, it's an experiment, um, but I think in the moment, 30 years after the starting uh, process, uh, I think more and more sure that this is the right way. And we have a really hard fighting process to the normally forest engineers in Germany. They are fighting on really hard manner to, to us, that we are on the wrong way and um, more and more the other ones adapted to us. That is the, that is the situation. One question is, uh, you said that there's not, uh, you don't have a lot of dead wood in the 100 year unmanaged forests. From which age in the unmanaged forest do you expect to have more dead wood? Do you have any other areas or some, yeah. some that is, hints about that? That is different like from tree species to tree species. Uh, for example, beech is the main tree species. That is very easy to say. We have a uh, very high uh, dead wood. Um, in the in the diameter classes from zero to to twenty or thirty centimeters, and that is a normally process from the uh, from from the young beech uh, forest. And after thirty centimeters or forty centimeters, that is more or less nothing. And the next step is uh, growing up as after eighty five centimeters, the, the 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 mortality rate by the beech is growing up from zero after 85 centimeters to 20 in 10 years yeah uh, so you we have we made the sample plot inventories if the beach is 85 centimeters the mortality rate to the next 10 years is 20 percent so uh, um, so we have a really strong um, 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 yeah dead wood classification in the different diameters class and the, on the opposite the oak, this is the second uh, dominated tree species by uh, us in the forest. So in this one, you can see they have more or less a stable um, uh, a decreased rate by the mortality rate. They are starting by more or less 8% by 7 or 10 centimeters and is uh, going up uh, um, to, to 5% uh, by a diameter of one, one meter and more. And uh, but it is a really stable situation, and so that is um, if you have a mixture uh, stand or from beech and oak, so you can find in many kind of the uh, uh, um, sands they have a diameter classes from uh, thirty to to uh, eighty centimeters. You can only find oak they are dying, no beech, 
And if they are bigger, then the beach is coming and they have a high uh, um, uh, ascending volume of, or not standing volume, the high deadwood bull volume and also biotope trees. That is the situation. And also you can, I can say for the different other tree species, uh, more or less the same. Thank you. Uh, the last question is, um, if significantly more forests are managed for high diameters, the price premium for large diameter wood might decrease due to market situation. Any reflections on that? And generally, what we see in the, in the last 30 years is that the, the price level is always increased by the, by the bigger trees. That is what I can say, and that is, uh, uh, and we have a really um, uh, growing market for the higher diameter trees. Uh, I think it is, uh, has two points on this one. The first point is that we have uh, a lower number from the import of the tropical zone from the big broadleaf tree species, and so oh, that is a that is a, yeah uh, that is a good point for using the timber from the own country and the second one is also um, that we have uh, by the spruce we have an adoption to um, to the industry they are using the small or middle-sized uh, um, timber and they cannot use the bigger ones but the bigger ones by the spruce has also a good market in the source part of, of Germany so they have a special market for this one but I think that is always not a special market we have in the moment we have we, 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 I can cut my whole forest and uh, all the biggest trees, yeah, and um, that is uh, not enough. So I, I think we, we have really a big, um, yeah, uh, a big market for the for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the big for the big trees. I think I cannot see that uh, that is going down. That is a theoretical discussion, from my yeah. view.